إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا استقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, for us to be successful, we should always attain or seek to attain a zuhud. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says a zuhud in the Arabic language, وَهَذَا لُغَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ And this is the, وَهَذِهِ لُغَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ And this is the language of Islam. He says that a zuhud entails abandoning a matter. That you abandon a matter while despising it, while belittling its significance, making it seem like it's not worth very much. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, I heard Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah say, as zuhud entails abandoning what does not bring you benefit in the hereafter. Attaining a zuhud is that you abandon what will not bring you some benefit, some raising in status, some mercy from Allah in the next life. This is what a zuhud is. It is renouncing the dunya, renouncing it, not caring for it giving it little importance to the big scheme, to the big picture. And it resides in the heart. And it can be achieved by ridding the heart, the slave ridding his or her heart from the love and the eagerness in this life. If we want to attain it, we cannot love this life more than we love Allah and Islam and His Messenger wasallam. This way the dunya will be in one's hand and not in one's heart. And this is where we want the dunya. Just in your hand, because if it's in your heart, how can it go coexist with loving Allah and loving His Messenger وسلم, and loving Al Islam? <clears throat> because the heart should love Allah above all things and the hereafter and that desire, and it should all be in one's heart. Allah says, "Ma andukum yanfad, wa ma and Allah ibaq, wa la nazzianhum, wa la nazzianna al-ladina sabaru." Allah says what means whatever is with you, it's going to be exhausted. None of it will matter. It will all become dust. Everything of possessions, of materials, of loved ones, it will become nothing. And whatever is with Allah, of good deeds, it will remain. It will be there for you to be weighed on Yom Al-Qiyamah. And those who are patient, we will certainly pay them a reward in proportion of what they used to do. That patience during the hardships and the trials and the calamities of this life, Allah has a reward waiting. Allah, He says, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. Allah says what means and pay attention to it. He said know that this life 
is a life of play and amusement and entertainment. It's a life of pomp and mutual boasting amongst one another. And this is what we see that people do. Boasting, being arrogant, being proud, comparing oneself to other people, and rivalry in respect to wealth and children. This is the race that we're running. Many times we forget about the race to Jannah, and it's the race to top your brother, to top your sister, to top your whoever it is in terms of wealth and children. As the likeness of a vegetation after rain, this is this life, right? That vegetation, when the rain comes down, then it grows. The tiller who tilled the land, he's happy. He sees the greens come out. He sees the products come. But then what happens? It dries up, and then it turns yellow, and then it becomes straw. It's of no benefit. It will not give you anything long-lasting. But in the hereafter, there is severe torment for the disbelievers and the evildoers. And there is forgiveness from Allah and his good pleasure for the believers and the good doers. Whereas the life of this world is just an illusion, a deceiving enjoyment. And this is what it is. Happy one second. As the Prophet he said, frequently remember that destroyer of pleasures, it is death. It will come after every one of us. Everyone is going to go. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Everyone will taste death, every soul. So keep your focus on this. Keep your focus on what this life is filled with and how it won't gain you necessarily that good in the akhirah if you chase it. Keep your eye on the prize and that's being entered into Jannah. عن أبو العباس سهل بن سعد الساعدي رحمه الله قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله دلني على عمل إذا عملته أحبني الله وأحبني الناس a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, O oh, Messenger of Allah وسلم, tell me something that I can do so that Allah loves me and the people love me. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't reprimand him, reprimand him for wanting the, yani, the people's love as well. This is something we seek. We have these hearts Allah gave us that seeks the love of other people that we love. Right? So the Prophet ﷺ he said, Is had fi dunya Allah. Have zuhud in this dunya. Renounce this world. Focus on wanting to be in Jannah. Focus on wanting to make it to Jannah. To be with Allah where your roof is His Arsh. If you're in the uppermost part. Renounce this dunya and Allah will love you. وَزْهَدْ فِي مَا عِنْدَ النَّاسِ يُحِبَّكَ الناس. And give up hope. Give up. Renounce what the people possess. Don't care for what the people have. Do not envy. Do not be jealous. Do not look for what the people have and want it or desire it for yourself. And the people will love you. And in reality, this hadith is truth to the core 150%. Renounce this world, Allah will love you. And you renounce what the people possess, and you will find that the people will love you. An Abi Humayd al Sa'idi, radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ajmilu fi qalb al dunya, fa inna kullan muyassarun lima kutiba lahu minha. This hadith, which is in Sunan al kubra al-Bayhaqi, and Shaykh al-Adani, he authenticated it as Sahih. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Be moderate in seeking this world. Don't put all your energy, all your efforts, all your wealth, all your mind, all your soul, all your heart, in seeking this life, seeking this dunya. For everyone will be facilitated towards what has already been decreed for him or her. And this is this life. Allah has written. Either He has written for you to get something or not to get it. So be moderate in what you're seeking. If it's meant for you, Allah will give it to you. If it's not meant for you, ain't nobody or nothing going to get it to you. So be moderate in what you seek of this life. Don't always just seek, seek the lavishness and the grandeur. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, man talab al-dunya adarra bil-akhira, wa man talab al-akhirata adarra bil-dunya, fa'adirru this hadith, which is in a zuhud ibn Abi al-Asim and Shaykh al-Abani, he graded it as hasan, as an accepted, accepted fair narration. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever seeks the world will be harmed in the hereafter. If you're going after this dunya, be prepared for roughness in the next life. A dunya, كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, a dunya sijin al mu'min wa jannat al kafir. This dunya is a prison for the believer, it is jannah for the disbeliever. <coughs> if you're seeking this life, then be prepared to be harmed in the next life. 
And the Prophet ﷺ then he said, and whoever seeks the akhirah, whoever seeks the next life, then he may be harmed in this world. But what? It comes with being raised and ranked if you're patient and you're humble and you have humility. It comes with forgiveness and mercy for the sins and the transgressions against us, Allah's limits that we do. So if you seek the akhirah, you may be harmed in this world. Thus be harmed, the Prophet ﷺ, he ended it, be harmed with the ephemeral, be harmed with what is short-lived. For the sake of the everlasting. And this is common sense. You can ask a kid, what's better, forever or one day? And they'll say forever. So focus on what is forever, not on what is a short time. Even if someone lives to a hundred, this is not even one, one trillionth of the time that time has existed. And Khabab ibn al-Arat, قَالَ قَالَ النَّبِيهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّمَا يَكْفِي أَحَدَكُمْ مَا كَانَ فِي الدُّنْيَا مِثْلُ زَادِ الرَّاكِبِ Shaykh Al-Albani, he authenticated this hadith of Sahih. Khabab ibn al-Arat, he said that the message of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, Verily, it is enough for you to have in the world the likes of a traveler's provision. This should be our possessions. What you would have if you were traveling. Is this what we really possess? Or do we possess more? If only we lived like this. If only really what we possess could fit in two suitcases. Right? This is what an airline allows you as a max, right? Sometimes to take with you. So this is the, the provision of the traveler. Do any of us just have possessions of two suitcases? Get us a hundred suitcases where it wouldn't be enough. And put fifty boxes on it wouldn't be enough. We should have what is sufficient, what will get us by. But no, we walk into wardrobe closets. And we're looking at rows of clothing. We have 20 pairs of shoes. Some we don't even wear. We just wear them once. We bought them so they would match one outfit. How is this the provision of a traveler? We have in the message of Allah وسلم, the best example, the role model for the one who yearns to meet Allah. And the last day he remembers Allah much. So how can we... Love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Love this deen. Say that we're humble. Say that we have zuhud, but we have the provisions of fifty travelers. An Abu Khalid al Walidi, an Abi Huraira رضي الله عنه قال ولا علمه إلا قد رفعه قال يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا ابن آدم تفرغ لعبادتي أملأ صدر صدرك غنا وأسد فقرك وإن لم تفعل بناء ملأت صدرك شغلا ولم أسد فقرك. In this hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, Abu Hurairah he narrates and he said I don't know your herb. Khalid he related that Abu Hurairah said and he said this was marfu. It was Lairis who having attributed it to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said Allah says. O son of Adam, devote yourself to my worship. I will fill your heart with contentment. And truly the one who loves to worship Allah, nothing really rocks him in life. He's content even with the le- least amount of food, the least amount of wealth, the least amount of everything. Whatever Allah has given him, he's content. And take care of your poverty, and he will take care of your poverty. You'll be content with your wealth, your health, your status, your loved ones. Everything will be fine to you. But if you do not devote yourself to Allah's worship, then I will fill your heart with worldly concerns and not take care of your poverty. And truly, you see the one who is not focused on worshipping Allah. Like he's on a wheel of a hamster and it just keeps going and going. There's always chaos. There's never contentment. There's never calmness. And Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, قال, Abdullah, he said, the Prophet وسلم, he laid down a reed mat so that he could rest on it. And he found that when he removed himself from it, that there was marks on his body, imprints on his body, on his skin, from laying down on that reed mat. This is something that would, you know, make dents into the skin, not these soft mattresses with feather and cotton and layers upon layers of whatever it is to make it so comfortable for us to lay on. And this is the best of mankind, he would lay on this mat. So the man, he said to him, Abdullah, he said to him, May my mother and my father be ransomed for you, O Messenger of Allah Wasallam. If you told us this, this is what you had, we would have gotten you something to save you from this trouble that would have harmed your body. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, مَا أَنَا وَالدُّنْيَا إِنَّمَا أَنَا وَالدُّنْيَا كَتَرَابٍ 
أستظل تحت شجرة ثم راح وتركها رهب نماذج وهذا حديث حسن what did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he told him did he say you know what you're right I'm the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم give me give me a nice mattress layered with you know cushion and and, and cotton and something that's comfortable no he said to him صلى الله عليه وسلم what is there between myself and this world what is there between myself and this dunya the world and I are just like a rider who stops under a tree for getting some shade and then gets back up and goes and leaves it. This is this dunya. It's a pit stop, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So why are we putting all our effort and energy into it as if success in this life is going to mean success in the akhirah? Because it ain't like that. We know the hadith we always mention from Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah where he said that the Prophet وسلم, he took hold of him and he said, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبَ وَعَابِرُ السَّبِيلِ be in this life, O Ibn Umar, anhuma, as if you're a stranger, strange to this life, meaning you don't want to feel settled, you're cautious of your surroundings, you're never comfortable, you know that you don't want to be here. Or sabir, or like you're a traveler, somebody who's just going by, you may have this pit stop, but you're going to continue, so don't tie yourself to it. Don't make this world and you like it's tied like it's glued and there's no separating it. No, in fact, separate it. Because you don't want to put it all here. The rest of that hadith, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he continues, he says, If you reach the evening, don't think you're going to get to the morning. And if you reach the morning, don't think you're going to leave until the evening. Take from your health while you're healthy. Do good deeds. Serve Allah before al marad before you get sick. وَخُدْ مِنْ مِنْ حَيَاتِكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكَ And take from your life before your death. While you're living, while you're breathing, while you're able, while you're capable. Give in charity, do good deeds. Do what Allah commanded. Do more than what He commanded before death comes to you. And you can't do any of those things anymore. عن زيد بن ثابت رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كانت الدنيا همه فرق الله عليه أمره وجعل فقره بين عينيه ولم يأته من الدنيا إلا ما كتب كتب له ومن كانت الآخرة نيته جمع الله له أمره وجعل غناه في في قلبه وأتت وأتته وأتته الدنيا وهي راغمة شيخ الألباني هي أفتنتك لذلك حديث الصحيح you find it in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, the Prophet وسلم, he said, whoever is concerned about the world, Allah will disorder his affair. Again, his affairs back to chaos. There will always be this, this chaoticness to the person with respect to this dunya. Allah will disorder his affairs. He will make poverty appear before his eyes, and he won't get from this dunya except what Allah has written for him, which is what you're going to get anyway. But the person thinks that they can maybe surpass what Allah has written for them. This is why... We're slaves of this dunya instead of slaves of Allah. But he said, whoever is concerned with the hereafter, with the next life, Allah will settle his affairs. Allah will make things good for him. Allah will bring him to contentment in his heart so that he will accept whatever happens to him or what befalls him. And the world will reluctantly come to him. Amen. The world's still going to come to you. The world will still fall in your lap. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam الزهد means to renounce this world to belittle its significance because you know what is forever is more significant This is something that we need to work on we need to attain Listen to some more advices from those who preceded us. And inshallah we can implement them so that we may be of those who have zuhud. Seek the akhirah, you'll have both. Al-Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah. He often used to say, oh youth, and he would address the youngsters. He would address the youngsters, but this is an advice to the young, the old, the male, the female, the, health, the healthy, the sick, the rich, the poor, whoever it may be. 
He would say, O youth, seek the akhirah. This life, the front, the prize at the front of your head, what's always on your mind should be that next life. You making it to Jannah. Being called on Yom al mazid the day of increase, to see the face of Allah. Being able to respond to salamu alaykum. When Allah calls out to the inhabitants of Jannah, peace be upon you. And the inhabitants say, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakti ya al-jalal wa al-ikram. And he will say, Aina ibad al-ladheena ata'uni bil-ghaydu wa lam yarawni. Where are my servants who used to worship me without seeing me? And this will be the day called, the people of Jannah are called to see the face of Allah. This is, should be your prize. This should be more important than anything this dunya can ever bring us, even if everything in the dunya was to come to us. <clears throat> he said, O oh youth, seek that hereafter. For we often see people pursuing the hereafter. We often see the people who make the akhira their goal. And guess what? The dunya still comes to them. They'll still get the good of this life. And you can ask for both. رَبَنَا أَتَنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Oh Allah, give us good in this life and the next life and save us from the torment of the fire. But you will find when you make the akhirah your priority, the dunya is going to come to you too. But he said that we've never seen somebody make the dunya their priority and they get the akhirah as well. It ain't going to work. It's your choice. It's my choice. It's our choice. What do we really want out of our existence? Not just this dunya. Al-Hasan al-Basri, he was written to by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah, who wrote to him, exhort me, give me some advice, give me something, tell me something, warn me of something, admonish me. Al-Hasan, he wrote back to him, he said, the dunya distracts people and preoccupies, preoccupies the heart and the body. And that's what this dunya does. Even in the gift, hadiyya min Allah, the gift from Allah, the salah, with its ruku', with its sujood, with its fatiha, everything, that gift of salah, and yet what? It preoccupies, it's preoccupied. Sila baynaka wa bayna rabbik, the connection between you and your Lord, the communication between your Lord, so you can ask Him for forgiveness, you can ask Him for mercy, you can ask Him for guidance, you can praise Him and thank Him and glorify Him. That salah, and yet in it, amai, mashur, so is busy. With what? With the dunya. The heart busy with the dunya. Even in salah. So what about other matters? He said the dunya distracts and preoccupies the heart and the body. But as zuhud, when you have asceticism, when you don't give importance to this dunya and the worldly things, it'll give rest to the heart and the body. It'll give you peace. It'll give you contentment. You will be happy naturally. Verily, Allah will ask us about the halalings. He ended his message to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz with Allah will give us happy, uh, will give us halal things we, عفوا, Allah will ask us about halal things we enjoyed in this life. Then he said, do you think he's not going to ask you about the haram? Do you think Allah's not going to question us about the haram? If he'll ask us about the halal we enjoyed, you think we're not going to have to look at what we did wrong, what, how we sinned, how we transgressed his limits? Imam Ahmad, he divided zuhud into three parts. The first one, wajib, obligatory upon all the people to have, is that you stay away from the haram. This is the first part of zuhud. You stay away from the muharramat. Whatever is forbidden, you stay away from it. This is basic zuhud, 101. Flatline, for every Muslim should be upon it. You stay away from the haram, this is basic of renouncing this world. Because the desires are calling us to do more. Part two, Abandon what is not necessary what is not necessary from the halal things. This is for the distinguished person. Now something is halal, he still stays away from it. I don't need it. This is halal for me to have? A second thing, a third of it, a fourth, whatever it may be, something halal? I don't want it. I don't need it. Leave it for somebody else. This is a distinguished level of zuhr. And then there's that third one, and it's for the people who have knowledge of this deen, who really understand this deen. And it is that you abandon what will busy you from the remembrance of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Think of this. It's halal. It's good. It may be fun. You want to do it. You deserve it. You work hard. You want to hang out with the, the, the brother. Whatever it may be. It's halal fully. But you, you, you leave it off. Saying, you know what? If I go, I may not make, may make, I may not make my afar for the evening. If I go, I may not remember my prayers. If I do this, Something might happen and I, I will miss my prayers. 
when we abandon things for the sake of Allah, for the remembrance of Allah, then this is a higher level. You truly understand your deen. Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi, rahimahullah, he said, it was said, the one who seeks this world is the one who drinks from an ocean. It's like the one who drinks from an ocean. When you're thirsty, would you drink salt water? No. Nobody who knows what salt water would do to you would drink salt water. It will make you thirstier. It's the chemistry of it. You want your Fiji water, your Kirkland, your uh, Crystal Geyser, uh, whatever you want. Whatever good water you turn to when you're really thirsty, you worked hard in the sun, you're sweating, you want something to quench your thirst. You won't go to salt water. He said, the one who seeks this world is the one who, when he's thirsty, he would go drink from the ocean, from the salt water. Whenever he drinks, he's going to get more thirsty and more thirsty, more thirsty and more thirsty until it will kill him. And this is the likes of this dunya. The more you seek it, the more you love it, the more you desire it, the more it will destroy you, the more it will ruin you, the more it will kill you. It doesn't mean you cannot enjoy this life. It doesn't mean you cannot have good times and laugh and do good things and do halal things and do what is permissible. Of course, and there's a lot of it. I'm sick of the people who say, oh, everything's haram. No, you're mocking the religion of Allah. Everything is not haram. There is more halal than there is haram. But we just, our desires want us to go to the haram. Shaitan wants us to go to the haram so we can follow down his evil path. Right? So, just do not give significance to this life. Do not give importance to this life. Do not prioritize this life over the next life. And you will find yourself successful. This is a zuhud. We're going to end with this one statement of al Hassan and Basri. Brothers, if you can move forward, there's some who are standing. Brothers who are coming in, pray to Raka'as before you sit down. Barakallahu feekum. Ja'a rajulun ila ila al Hassan al Basri. A man came to al Hassan al Basri. Rahimahullah. Qala lahu, ya Abu Sa'id. He told him, oh Abu Sa'id. Abu Sa'id was his nickname. He's the father of Sa'id. Ma sirru zuhadaka fi dunya What is the secret to your zuhud, to your asceticism, to you renouncing this life and not caring, detaching yourself from the importance of this dunya and to being pious and having taqwa? What is your secret to it? Ma huwa sir? What is your secret? Limada la ta'kul al-haram Why do you not consume the haram? Food-wise, money-wise? لماذا لا تنظر إلى الحرام؟ Why do you not look at what is haram? When you can enjoy it, maybe repent for it later. ولا تأكل حقوق الآخرين. Why do you not consume the rights of the other people, or consume the wealth of the other people, or what belongs to other people? ولا تتعامل بالغش والربا. Why do you not, in your interactions, in your dealings, cheat some people? You can make some more money. Why do you not deal with riba? Interest and usury, which is a major sin, and we need to start dealing with this because it's engulfs at least American society and now the world because of what desires. We want things, you can't afford it, you put it and you pay some interest on it. And this is not allowed in Islam. It's not allowed in Islam. But he asked him, why? Why, why don't you do that? Why don't you lie? Or tell what is not true. What is the, what is the secret to you having zuhud? لماذا تعمل بأمانة وإخلاص? Why do you deal with the people in your transactions, in your interactions, with truthfulness, with honesty, with إخلاص, with sincerity? راد بما قسمه الله لك. Why are you pleased with what Allah has given you, or how? Are you pleased just with what Allah has given you so that you're content? واسمعوا إلى إجابته قال رحمه الله. Listen to what he responded. Al Hasan al Basri he responded. So what was his, his, his uh, secret? Arba'atu ashya. He said, four things. I understood four things. وَمَا هِيَ يَا إِمَامِ They asked him, what are they, O oh, Imam? So Al-Hasan al-Basri, again, he was asked, what is the secret to your renouncing this life? Separating yourself from its importance and prioritizing the next life. life. He said, I understood four things. قَالَ الْأُولَى عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ رِزْقِي لَا يَأْخَذُهُ غَيْرِي فَأَطْمَأَنَّ قَلْبِي he said, I understood that my rizq cannot be taken by anyone and not, can, cannot be given to me by anyone other than Allah. It cannot be taken from me by anyone other than Allah. So my heart became content. Whatever Allah has given me, wealth, food, family, loved ones, whatever, my heart's content. I'm set with it. This was it's necessary for you to have someone to renounce this dunya. 
وعلمت أن عملي لا يقوم به غيري فاشتغلت به and I understood that no one can do my actions of ibadah except for me so I started doing them myself any good deed I did it myself I didn't give it to somebody else my ibadah I do it myself my prayers, my dua, my supplications everything he said I started doing it myself والثالث وعلمت أن الله مطلع علي فاستحييت أن يراني على معصية He said I understood that Allah can see me and Allah is watching me and Allah knows where I am if I'm in the masjid if I'm in a home if I'm by myself if I'm around others if I'm in a room if I'm in uh, يعني, uh, a closet wherever I may be Allah is watching me and Allah knows of me and Allah has full knowledge of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing and what I might be saying Allah has full knowledge I understood Allah is watching me so I became ashamed to do the wrong I became ashamed to do the wrong he knows you actualize that Allah sees you as if there's an eye right over your head the whole time. So I said I became ashamed to do the wrong. I understood that death is waiting for me. So I started to prepare for my meeting with Allah. We have an interview coming up at a job. You practice. You prepare for that meeting. You review what you might say. You might have someone interview you and practice your responses. You have any meeting, business meeting. You make sure your numbers are correct, your reports are there, everything is ready. You review it, you review it, you review it, so you know you're prepared for that meeting. What about the meeting of Allah, with Allah? What have we prepared for that meeting? So he said, I understood these four things. My risk can't be taken anyone from away by anyone, so my heart was content. I understood no one can do my actions of worship, I did them myself. I realized Allah is watching me, so that I would be ashamed of doing wrong. And I understood that death is waiting for me, so I started to prepare for my meeting with Allah. This is a zuhud. This is renouncing this life and distancing yourself from its importance. May Allah make us of those who have zuhud, and make us of those who turn to Him in repentance when we sin, and make us of those who renounce this life only seeking to be admitted into his Jannah. Allah makhfil al-Muslimin wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat wa al-Hiyat minhum wa al-Amwat inna ka anta sami'an qareeb al-Mujib al-Da'wat ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik ya muqallib al-Qulub thabit qulubna ala deenik Allahumma a'isa al-Islam wa al-Muslimin wa ansurna ala a'adaik wa a'adaik deen wa ansur ikhwanana wa akwatana fi filastin wa fi kulli makan ya arhamar rahimin subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen wa alhamdulillah hi rabbil alameen وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين